In this tutorial we'll have a look at some basic projection techniques and in particular we'll have a look at the two projection nodes available to us and that is the projection 3D node which is a shader as you can see by its spiky node shape and therefore it's available through the 3D shader menu in the middle here and the UV project node which actually modifies geometry and as the name implies it modifies the geometry's UV space and that's why you can find it in the 3D modify menu all the way at the bottom down here. Now let's have a look at how those things work. If you simply want to plug a texture into a 3D object, you can just connect it like this. However, in this case, the geometry is quite heavily distorted and therefore the UV space, which controls how a texture is placed on the geometry, causes the texture to follow the surface and therefore distort quite heavily as well. So in order to regain control over perfect placement of our texture, we can use the Project 3D node. And that means we need to plug the first pipe into the texture and the second pipe into a camera. Let's have a look at the camera. So the camera is just looking straight ahead at that object. And uh, now that shader projects the texture into space. And if we assign this shader to a geometry, and the geometry happens to be in front of the camera, it will actually show that texture on it. However, you'll see... Actually, let me down -res this for a second so we can see a bit more. You'll see if I move the geometry around then the texture doesn't really care because the way we've set this up does not actually make the texture stick to the surface so if you just want to quickly slap things together this is fine but if you actually need control over transformation or in particular distortion then you might want to use the UV project however if you only deal with transformation meaning translation and rotation and scale even there's a workaround so let's undo this and instead of using the card, we can use an axis node and parent it to the card. So we can create a transform geo node, which gives us an axis pipe to parent something to. And then we create the parent axis and link that to our card. And we also link the projection camera to the same axis. And now we use the axis to move things around. And because we're moving the geometry in the same way that we're moving the camera now, we're actually free to transform the whole thing and you can even scale the geometry like that. And the texture will appear to stick to the surface because the projection camera is just following exactly what the geometry does. However, if we want to do some more complicated distortion to the surface, we will be running into a problem. Let's have a quick look. Let's just get rid of this. And instead of transforming it, let's say we want to displace the whole thing. And we'll use a displace geo node for this, which you can find in the 3D modify menu. And also let me bring in a displacement texture that I painted earlier. And uh, actually let's compare the color map with the displacement map real quick. So if I do that here, you'll see they line up pretty much perfectly. So we'll now use this texture and plug it into the displaced geo node to distort the geometry. And if I crank up the distortion a little bit, we'll actually see that it doesn't line up with our color map at all. And that's because the displaced geo map is using the UV attribute of the geometry, while our color map is using the camera and the project 3D node to place itself. So we got the shader projection versus the UV attribute here, both of which have basically nothing to do with each other. Also, if you if you look a bit closer at the eye here, if I crank up the distortion, you'll see how the texture slides over the surface as I distort the geometry. So that's no good either. So it looks like we're stuck with a shader project node. So if you have to do stuff like this, go with the UV project node. So let's start over. I'll just copy the setup over here. Oops, we don't need that again. And uh, I'll just move it over here and grab the camera again. And paste it over here and grab the card node again. And paste it over here and start from scratch. So uh, let me just clear the bin. And then let's down res the card so we can actually see what's going on with the UVs in a second. And now go to the viewer settings.
and click the point UV button here. That will actually visualize our UVs, which means these are the coordinates that the texture reads in order for it to know how it's supposed to place itself on the geometry. So if these numbers change, the texture placement on the card will change. So now let's have a look what happens when I connect the UV project node to the geometry and hook up the camera as well. And now if we load this result into buffer 2, this is before, this is after. So you'll see those numbers change and therefore the information that is used to place the texture on the geometry is changed in the object itself. So if I now connect the texture, once again let's look at before and after. This is what the UVs do. So this is distorted because the native UV space was following the curvature and this is placed properly because the UVs now are derived from the camera. So once again we can use the camera to place this but from here on in downstream we are pretty much free to do whatever we want. So let's have a look for example using a transform geo node to simply move the whole thing around you can see we don't have to wire up any axes or create hierarchies the geometry is simply ready to do whatever you want it to do. And the real fun thing is that now you're actually free to distort this thing as well. So let's try the displacement again. Displace Geo and grab the displacement texture. If we hook that up and actually upraise the card a little bit now. And now you'll see when I crank up the displacement that it actually lines up with our texture perfectly and if you look at the eye for example if I play with a distortion you'll see that the texture now perfectly sits on the geometry and moves with it and that's because in this case the camera has modified the geometry's texture placement information whereas in the previous case we were actually applying a shader projection or what I like calling a light projection which means that if the geometry happens to be in front of the camera it will be the projection surface but the actual texture placement information inherent in the geometry is not actually changed.